So you're talking about blood lipids there. Um, and I think people that have tuned into this show and certainly people that have tuned into your show will be well aware of this discussion around how saturated fat affects cholesterol and specifically ApoB and how that can sort of modulate cardiovascular disease risk and um, increase the risk of atherosclerosis, this plaque buildup in, in our arteries. So is, is that the, the primary mechanism by which saturated fat is affecting cardiovascular disease? Is it the only mechanism? Are there other mechanisms that you're aware of? It's the one that has the most data behind it. So to give people a bit more detail, so I guess we could give people the 22nd uh, primer, well, just in case people aren't familiar with ApoB or, or it's been a while since you heard about it. Uh, these fats, cholesterol, triglycerides, they are carried around in our blood. Fat and water don't mix. So the way our body solves that is by carrying fat inside these um, cargo ships, if you will, called lipoproteins. And they have, lipoproteins have essentially two large families. One of those is atherogenic, raises risk of uh, cardiovascular disease if those lipoproteins are very concentrated in the, in the blood, in the plasma. And conveniently, that family carries a tag, a protein called apolipoprotein B, or ApoB for short. So we can measure ApoB and get a count of the number of those lipoproteins that are problematic. So that's ApoB. Um, in terms of the mechanism of saturated fat, the most uh, well accepted, the most documented mechanism has to do with the LDL receptor, which is essentially a docking station that exists in many places throughout our body, but the relevant location here would be the liver. And so these little antennae, these little docking stations are on the surface of the hepatocytes, the liver cells, and they bind to these, to these lipoproteins, particularly the ApoB carrying family, and they internalize them, removing them from circulation and lowering the concentration of ApoB carrying lipoproteins in the blood, which lowers risk. When we up our intake of saturated fat, it removes some of those receptors on the surface of the, the liver, and the consequence is that less lipoproteins are removed from circulation, their half-life goes up, their residence time goes up, their concentration goes up, and risk goes up. So that's the most well-established uh, mechanism. There, there are some others that are hypothesized, things around some inflammatory markers, uh, coagulation factors, other pro proteins that are on the surface of lipoproteins that also determine their residence time and their binding affinity to different receptors. Uh, so there's research on that, but there's less um, certainty, I would say, than the LDL receptor mechanism. And you made a point earlier that some saturated fat in the diet is fine. Um, it's always going to be there. And, and the mission here is not to get it to zero. So if we come back to that 8 to 10% threshold and thinking about that process you just described there with the, the dock, um, so is it that once you sort of go up above that 8 to 10%, of energy that you you get a degree of this down regulation of that LDL receptor or that um, that dock to the point where there is this increased sort of uh, residence time or backlog of these ApoB containing lipoproteins that is now sufficient in the plasma to cause plaque buildup. You know, I don't know if this is known that mechanistic uh, detail. I've asked this exact question a number of times, and I have never heard a compelling answer. And actually, for my conversation with uh, Kevin Mackey, that's one of the top questions I had on my end. And I already sent him, the, sent him the questions, and that was featured on there. Because when you look at the effect of saturated fat intake on blood lipids, it's fairly linear. It's near linear. The LDL cholesterol and ApoB go up in a fairly straight line. And, and also, if you look at the effect of ApoB concentration on risk, it's also pretty much a straight line. So the, the exact mechanistic reason for that sigmoidal curve, I've wondered this many times myself. I've asked this question, uh, and I've never heard a, a, a convincing explanation. I don't know if this is understood, but my, my hope is that Kevin Mackey, being uh, one of the, the top dogs on lipids, is going to be able to answer it. So stay tuned. 